I'm Clifford Luster, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Schneps Media. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. On the panel today is Stacey Goldberg. She's the Advertising Manager for New York Family with over 15 years of digital experience. We also have Kevin Kelly, Digital Ad Manager for Schneps with over 15 years, as well as Chris Van Zandt and Kelly Houston, both who oversee our digital execution. Schneps Media made a large investment to help our customers grow into the highly competitive landscape of New York City. We are Google Premier Partners, a status awarded to only 3% of all Google resellers. What makes our difference is our team members are product specialists, meaning no jack of all trades. Each certified expert is a product specialist for that product only. So an SEO specialist only manages SEO, SEM only manages SEM, and so on. Today, we will be explaining some of the best ways to market the parents. And at the end of, we will be showing you some examples of recent executions that our digital team has done. Please feel free to put all your questions in the Q&A and we will do our best to answer as many as possible at the end of the presentation. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Chris and Kelly for the presentation. Great, thank you, Cliff. Good morning, everyone. I will share my screen. Chris, does that look correct? Yep, you're good. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Cliff. We will jump right into things. Taking a quick look at our agenda, we're going to start with some millennial buying trends, looking at what's going on in the marketplace, followed by a full funnel strategy overview. Then we'll really dive into how we're going to reach, target, and engage these parents through those full funnel strategies and effective product mixes. We'll touch a little bit on different targeting options for our different products. And then as Cliff mentioned, we'll get into some case studies and some success stories. We should have time for Q&A at the end, but please feel free to put any of those questions in the chat throughout this presentation. All right, jumping right in here. One interesting fact is that millennials have now surpassed baby boomers as the largest adult generation living in the US. And millennials are also really known by that as that generation burdened by student debt. So it would follow that millennials are generally well educated. About a fully third um, with a, excuse me, uh, millennials aren't just well educated, they're the best educated generation in history with about 34% of those millennials holding a bachelor's degree. And these millennials are really caring more about brands missions and their value statements rather than just you know, their profit margins and what they're offering. And as much as 37% of millennials have said they're willing to purchase a product or a service from a specific company because they support that mission that they believe in. So I think this is important to keep in mind because we have to know how to speak to this generation and how to craft our advertising and our messaging to really have an impact on these millennial buyers. These next couple of graphs take a look really at social media habits among millennials. So eMarketer reports that social buying is increasing in the US across the board and more than half of all social media users will make a purchase on one of these social platforms. Your audience is here, they're engaging content here, they're purchasing here. So we wanna make sure that we have an online presence and a presence on our social media so we can get in front of these customers. I also thought it was interesting that looking at the types of different accounts that different generations follow, Millennials are the highest percentage of generation to be engaged with brand related Instagrams, Facebooks, any type of that social media. So again, just reiterating the fact that it is important to have a presence and make sure that you're communicating to these groups of people through these different channels. This is one of my favorite slides here and something we'll look at several times throughout the presentation. It's really important that we're taking this sales funnel or the buyer's journey into consideration when we're creating these marketing plans. Starting all the way at the top with branding and awareness, 
there are specific products that are going to help us engage new customers and help us fill our funnel. And those products are going to be much different than the products we would use to, for example, convert someone or get them to make a purchase. These different digital products really aren't one size fit all. They're not one product fits all solutions. So it's important that when you're looking at your digital marketing strategy, we have products that touch on each piece of this funnel. And this is going to apply to campaigns of any ad spend. It's really the key to success to get a successful campaign or see good results is making sure that we're having touch points with our customers from all the way at the top of this sales funnel, all the way through purchase and hopefully retention, getting those customers to come back and be loyal customers. And, and a little bit- Oh, sorry, oh, yeah. I was going to say, I would just add to that, that making sure that we understand everybody's business goals when we sit down and have conversations is going to be critical as well. So if your goal is to get clicks or conversions, we want to know that, and then we can utilize all of these different platforms to help us attain those goals. Sorry to cut you off, Kelly. No, that's, that's perfect, Chris. Well, actually, we have another sales funnel later on the presentation that speaks to those different KPIs and kind of where they fall on the sales funnel. This is something we look at every day when we're creating strategies and something I recommend everyone be familiar with. So again, we can reach those customers at every level. So the first thing we need to do here is reach parents who are actively searching for our businesses. These are going to be your lowest hanging fruit because these customers, they're already trying to find you. They're already going up to Google, typing in something like test prep near me or autism support services in New York City. If they're conducting these searches, and they are, we want to make sure that we have enough of an online presence and that it's optimized so that when these searches are conducted, we're showing up as that business of choice. 88% of people searching for a local business will call or visit that business within 24 hours. That is a very powerful stat. And if your local information isn't up to date, for example, on your Google business profile, someone calls you and they reach an invalid number, that's a really poor customer experience. So it's all about dialing in that online presence. The three products we really recommend here to reach those customers who are already searching for you are going to be local SEO, organic SEO, and paid search. These are all going to be considered mid to low funnel products. So we've already reached that consideration and intent phase within the sales funnel. They're already conducting searches, but these three products can really help push them further down the sales funnel to that conversion or purchase tier. Once we've advertised to that group of parents who are already actively searching for us, we also have to make sure that we're reaching people who aren't already aware of our business or our services. And this is really where those branding and awareness products are going to come into play. Higher funnel, but parents aren't going to be able to search for your business if they don't know it exists. So at this phase, we really wanna define that target audience and our ideal customer so we can identify those specific behaviors and demographics that our audience possesses and be able to go after those types of people with things like display, our co-branded Facebook and Instagram, and then our video products, streaming TV, YouTube, and pre-roll, all great examples, and video falls a little further down the funnel too. So again, all great ways to attract new parents and making sure we're really defining the target audience in this phase. And then lastly, we can't forget about our existing customers and our loyal customers. We wanna remind any of those customers who have done business with us in the past that we're still here and still a solution for their needs. Whether that's a children's museum that they may revisit, a pediatrician, an after school camp, we want these parents to stay engaged with our businesses and then potentially spread the word to other parents and be great word of mouth advertising. The products here that we recommend using would be things like retargeting. So this would, we'll get a little bit into this later as well, 
but this all involves retargeting people who have already been to your website or to your social accounts. And not only are we reminding people who we've done business with in the past and having them circle back as website visitors, we're also reaching people who may have visited our site, but they hadn't yet made a purchase. So a really great way to bring back that engaged audience to our content, to our website, and get them again in our sales funnel. So what are the products here that are going to help us reach these goals? Going back to reach, so showing up when people are actively searching about you, we're gonna use things like paid search, local SEO, and organic SEO. And on the right-hand side, this screenshot, it's just a screenshot of a search engine. I like to call this the anatomy of the search engine, but you can see where all three of these products come into play. You have your paid search up top, and then you have your local SEO through those map results. And at the bottom, we have our organic results. So all different places and different products we can use to help you and your business take up more inventory on these search page engine results. At the end, we'll also talk about um, some complimentary audits that you can request but we're happy to conduct complimentary audits for your local SEO, your organic SEO, and we can also conduct audits on any kind of paid search campaign if businesses are spending $1,500 a month. Moving back up the funnel, targeted display is going to be that higher funnel product and likely the product that you're most familiar with. These are going to be ads on your favorite websites and apps, and they can appear on things like mobile devices, laptops, desktops, tablets, really all about, again, defining that target audience through behaviors and demographics in the content that they're viewing online, getting in front of them and getting them to get to our website to learn more. And really the three things we look at when we're creating one of these display ads to capture our customer's attention, we want to have our logo included, let those prospective customers know who you are, offer some kind of value proposition, get them engaged with your ad, and then have some call to action, click here to learn more, sign up today. Those types of calls to action on your display ads are going to attract new customers bring them to your website so that they can be more educated, whether that's pediatric healthcare services, after school programs, legal advice, all about getting new customers into our sales funnel, into our websites. And I would, I would belabor that point and say, it's hard to drive conversions if we're not filling the top of that funnel. So while you may say to yourself, I don't click on display ads, but I do see them all the time. That's really what we're talking about here. It's creating that branding and awareness and ensuring that people see that brand recognition. They know the name of your company. And then once they go to make a decision or they do a little bit more investigating, they, that your name appears first and they're further down that sales funnel to start with. That means they're more likely to convert in the long run. Absolutely. Another way that we can target these parents are through digital video strategies. Video is an incredibly effective tool because we're reaching these parents with our message through both sight and sound. To Chris's point, this is really going to help us create that brand recall and get people to keep us in mind when they're conducting searches later on. I really like some of these stats listed here. Millennials are streaming video and they're streaming a lot of it. The largest streaming segment of viewers are aged 18 to 45. And 55% of streaming TV users report that they have a household income of 100K plus, they're married with children, and they solely use these streaming services. So a great way to get in front of your audience because your audience is engaged on these different platforms. We have products like pre-roll video. I really like to think of this as just the video version of a display ad, still going to be on those websites and apps and we can target really specifically and define that target audience. Streaming TV is an incredibly popular product and really a product that complements traditional TV. 
We're able to get in front of people on those large screen devices. And we also have a brand new product called Addressable Streaming TV. And this is a great product to show ROI. Through this Addressable Streaming TV, we can serve your ad or your commercial to that target audience. And then we can actually tell you who saw an ad and then walked into your store. Kind of a mix of streaming TV and geofencing, but a really neat way to show direct ROI. And then YouTube, that is now the second largest search engine. And when people are spending time on YouTube, they tend to be very engaged. So being able to get in front of users, specific targeted users while they're consuming that content is very powerful. And I can say as somebody who falls in the millennial category and has children, this is definitely something that appeals to me and some something where I would fall in as an audience member here. So all great points, Kelly. Absolutely. A couple other stats that I really like. 19, that's the number of hours per week people are watching video online. And that's up an hour compared to just two years ago. And then 88% of people say that they've been convinced to buy a product or service after watching a brand's video. So video, again, another really great way to get people engaged, but also an easy way to educate people about your product or service really gives you that time and format to be able to educate your consumers. And now I will pass it over to Stacy and Cliff to talk a little bit about Facebook. with targeting people who would most likely be interested in your business because they fit your demographics, they live in the area where you want to target. Um, the New York Family offers a co-branded social media program, very similar to you running paid social advertising, with the exception of we run the ads from our page um, targeting your audience. And as you can see up at the top, it says, for example, Westchester family is with, and we tag your business in the post. We have unlimited targeting uh, using Facebook and Instagram, where we not only can target obviously parents with children by age, but parents that read specific content, follow certain pages. Um, I get this question a lot. We can target by ethnicity, language spoken in the home, um, even something uh, targeting where somebody has their browser set to, let's say, Spanish. Um, we are able to <clears throat> know that and target that person. You know, and I have a little list here of the international travelers, private school education, Ivy League alumni. Um, so the targeting that we can serve these ads to is endless. Co-branding, again, ads serve from the New York family or your local family. Uh, one of the New York family local pages, again, tagging your business in the post, the ad links to your website. Um, so what we do here is it's a little bit different. Um, so you choose your target zip codes, you choose your target audience, who do we want this ad to be served to. Um, and what's great about this is first ad is served to all of your targeting within our social media followers. So, um, you know, whether they follow our Facebook, our Instagram, whatever they're following, um, the second set of ads is then served to our email subscribers. So if they live in your target zips, they serve, your, they uh, fit your profile, they go to our email subscribers, and then we target lookalikes, and then we also retarget. And again, that is with a Facebook pixel placed on your site, we are able to retarget website traffic uh, back to their social media feed. And kind of going along with that, based off what Stacy said, this is something we could do on your social platforms, but also something we can do through these display or video campaigns. Site retargeting is an incredible, incredibly effective way to reach people because they're already engaged. We know that they've already visited your website and clicked around. I will note this does require a pixel or just a piece of code to be placed on the back end of your website. This is free of charge, the actual pixel, and it's also free of charge to have this placed. So certainly something we recommend if you're running a digital campaign to be able to give us more conversion data, but also really harness the power of site retargeting and hitting those existing customers. And I'll pass it back to Stacy for the branded content. 
sorry, just trying to answer a couple chat questions. Um, <laughs> yes. So one unique thing, um, and I know I have um, some small agencies on this call as well, is um, because we are a publishing company uh, first, we have a very large editorial team here. And so branded content or um, any type of content marketing where we're writing for you and allowing us to tell your story, serve your message, align your brand with the message. Um, what we do is we create a unique and SEO piece of content. So we want to make sure before we write anything for you that it is searchable and it's what parents are searching for before we write. So our writing um, or how we write the, the style of it is often determined by how much search there is for the topic that you would are asking us to write about. Um, but it is written by a professional editorial team. We include not only content, but we'll put photos within your uh, content. We will also sort of put video within your content. Um, we publish it online. We can also publish it, obviously not video, but we can publish the content in any one of our magazines as well. Um, we can publish the content on your site if you prefer. Um, and what we do is we create a customized marketing campaign utilizing a variety of digital products that we will drive traffic to that content. So we write a piece of content, let's say we put it up on newyorkfamily.com, we then, you, your business is in Brooklyn, you have five zip codes you wanna reach and you want parents with children certain ages who have interests in A, B, and C. So we advertise via display, via social media, via email, via video, we advertise that content and drive it back to your article. So the really great thing about running display ads is that we are able to target extremely in an extremely granular fashion whether that be display banner ads, pre-roll video ads, or streaming TV, we can get extraordinarily granular in our targeting. Everything from millennial parents to parents with kids in the household, um, kids of a certain age, all of those things can be included. Obviously, we would also incorporate marital status and ethnicity, but there are hundreds of thousands of data elements that we can incorporate into our targeting. So that really allows us to, to reach a very niche market on reputable websites. So definitely something to consider as you're building out your campaigns with one of the reps, um, making sure that you know exactly who you want to reach and where is going to help us along the way. And we can also continue to make recommendations on top of what you already consider to be your audience. We can also run forecasts, which would allow us to dive into this much, much deeper. So one of the other nice things is not only can we include demographic targeting, but we can also get really granular when it comes to specific behaviors. So if you're looking to reach millennials with children, if you're looking to reach anybody who has an interest in specific children's causes, pediatrics or child care, and different children's products, those are all going to be things that we can include in our pre-roll video, display, and streaming TV campaigns. Again, we're also going to want to be able to target different attributes like parents, mothers, fathers of a of certain age range, um, millennials in general is, some, so is an area that we can target. And then again, targeting households based off the age of their children is really going to be very applicable in all of these scenarios. And I would add, I think you'd all be surprised at how granular these can get. We tried to keep them fairly broad for this presentation, but please reach out. We'd love to talk more about your specific target audience and be able to pull those really granular behavioral and demographic elements that apply to your business. Absolutely. We always joke about if we needed to target redheaded, left-handed golfers, we could probably do so given all the data elements that we have access to. So it gets really refined. And not only that, but when we run a campaign, we want to maybe start with a larger group of data elements or targeting parameters, and then reduce that or increase that based off the overall performance. So that's something that our team spends a lot of time on as we're running campaigns. We go through and look at all the different demographics, all the different behaviors, and we really start to refine it based on the performance of the campaigns. And our operations team is really paid based off of those parameters and making sure that campaigns perform based off of them. But again, just to reiterate, the targeting that we can do on the display side is typically going to be, you know, somewhat endless. Um, again, we'll include behavioral targeting, different types of content targeting. Do we want to reach people on parenting magazines or news sites? That's something to consider. 
Demographic targeting, again, we went through that, but certainly want to make sure that we're targeting people within this in the right age range or with their children in a specific age range. Geographic targeting, obviously that's going to be critical to any campaign that we run, whether we want to target a bunch of zip codes, we want to target a borough, we want to target a, a county, whatever that might be, or, or the entire state. Whatever that might be, we want to make sure that we get really refined targeting and again, expand or contract as needed for the campaign. Kelly did talk about site retargeting. That will require the pixel to be placed on your website. It is a very easy line of code um, that we can, we can actually work on placing for you if we have the right access. Search retargeting, making sure that we get in front of people based off of historical tar or search parameters that they've already utilized on sites like Google and Bing. And then frequency. This is something that we like to talk about pretty often because we wanna make sure that we're reaching people often so that that brand recognition is there. So we wanna make sure that we are hitting people with the right amount of frequency so they see your ads, but they're not feeling overwhelmed by it. And then typically we're not going to run during graveyard hours unless we're specifically asked to do so. And that would fall in this day parting category. So typically we don't run between midnight and 5 a.m. unless we are specifically asked to do so. All right, so back to the sales funnel here. As you can see on the left-hand side, we've added in those metrics and KPIs that go along with each phase of the customer journey. And these KPIs are really how we measure success when it comes to digital products. If we're looking at something more top of funnel, that branding and awareness where we're just trying to get our brand out there and attract new customers, something like the number of impressions delivered is an important metric or how many times people clicked on that ad. Looking a little bit more mid funnel, we would tend to look at things again, clicks are going to be important that shows intent or consideration. Also things like form fills and phone calls or even visits to your location will fall kind of in that mid funnel. And then ultimately at the bottom of the funnel, looking for something like an actual purchase or ultimately a returning customer. These are all different ways we can gauge, accept, gauge success and it's important to know that each product is going to have different success metrics. These products are specifically designed to work at different phases in the sales funnel. So we have to treat them accordingly when it comes to reporting. Reporting is something that we really enjoy talking about because we're able to show you the results of your campaign and give you that transparent data at any time you'll have access to a live reporting dashboard that's just 24 hours behind. And you're going to be able to monitor every piece of your campaign throughout the entirety of its campaign. For something like display or video, you're going to be able to check in, see how many impressions have been delivered, how many clicks have been driven to your website. You're also going to see insights on the geo-targeting, which zip codes or which geographies are being served, how many impressions, and who's clicking, where are we seeing the engagement. The great thing about digital is we have all of this data at our fingertips. And like Chris said, we have a dedicated team of campaign managers. They're pulling the levers to these campaigns, making optimizations, in real time because we're able to utilize this data throughout the campaign. We don't have to wait till the end of the campaign to make an adjustment. If we see something that we do or don't like, we can make a quick decision and optimize the campaign accordingly. You're also going to have insight into the creatives that you're running. We can do A-B testing. You can look at things like static creatives versus GIF creatives and see how people are interacting with those creatives. Maybe you change the color and people start to interact more. It's pretty interesting to see and compare different creative sets throughout one campaign. And of course, as we've been mentioning, these products are really effective way to target a specific audience. So you're also going to have insights into that audience or those audiences that we're targeting. We can see which groups of people are engaged, which groups of people are clicking, and again, we can adjust that at any time throughout the campaign. A few other things that you'll have access to through this dashboard, you will be able to see any conversions from your campaigns with display and video, 
Those are going to be conversions of people typically navigating around your site. And then you're also going to be able to see the types of sites that your ads are being served on, those sites and apps, and compare device type. We usually find that something, a more complex business or a niche industry, we might have more engagement on desktop or tablet where people can take the time to read something through and again, optimize accordingly. When we look a little bit further down the funnel at something like paid search or SEO, again, those metrics or those success metrics are going to change a little bit. Here, we're getting more into the gritty, nitty gritty of those conversions, time spent on site, your average cost per click, your keyword rankings. These are really the nitty gritty analytical pieces to your business and insights that you're going to get through running these campaigns. Local SEO, organic SEO, all of these products are wrapped up into one dashboard. So you're going to have a really comprehensive view of how all of your products are working together and then how all of your products are working individually. All right, these next few slides here are case studies or success stories that we've seen from other businesses and companies. And then after the case studies, we will have time for some Q&A. So this first, uh, first case study here is for a youth sports program. This is an excellent example of a full funnel strategy. The challenge for them was just increasing awareness and gaining registrations. They had multiple or they have multiple youth sports programs for various ages, as well as different summer camps for different levels and different skills. So we really needed to come up with a solution to have these targeted campaigns for all of the different skills and age groups and levels and courses they offered. Again, we went with a full funnel strategy. So starting with display, we were able to create that branding and awareness and drive new parents or existing parents. We then used pre-roll video along with Facebook and Instagram and email to continue that education and, and push them further down the funnel. And then lastly, paid search has been a very strong product for us in this campaign and how we've been able to increase signups, increase logins, and track all of this campaign's conversions. And this next slide is just a continuation. So same campaign here, but looking at a six month snapshot, our branding products alone drove over 6,400 people to their website throughout that, those six months. We had 855 people hit the registration button on our website. 273 users submit payment on the website. And then there were 355 new user logins to the portal. So as you can see, these SEO products, SEM, lower funnel, this is really where we're going to get that business data and be able to make optimizations to our campaign, decisions through our business, and be able to take all of this campaign data, make a story out of it, and improve our business moving forward. This next case study here is for a private school. And this customer actually came to us after having a poor experience with another digital marketing company. What we were able to do through those audits that we mentioned earlier, we were able to take a look at what they were currently doing, kind of revamp and reanalyze everything and come up with a more effective way to utilize their budget. We were able to reduce their paid search budget from what they were previously spending and put that into other products to be able to create this full funnel strategy. And again, using those marketing dollars as effectively as possible. So with this campaign, we've been using organic SEO, local SEO, programmatic display, paid search, social media, and then SNAP's education directory. And all of this together has driven to a very successful campaign, a lot of website traffic, and a, a big success overall. This campaign or this advertiser is still running with us today. A little bit more on that same private school. As we mentioned, we are running SEM and SEO for them. So you can really see on this slide and through these different metrics here how those lower funnel products helped us increase our site visitors and sessions and help to grow the site overall. 
through our paid search campaign, we've captured 485 inquiries. So a great way to drive lead generation as well. And then with SEO, the school has now, now has 10 keywords ranked on page one of Google, which accounts for 37% of all of their site traffic in June. SEO is a very complicated product, but it is an incredibly effective way and our team's very excited to be able to take this and, and show you how we can grow our business, grow that website traffic, and be really strategic about the types of keywords in Google searches we're going after. And then lastly here, we have a preschool or a um, child care, a smaller business here. But this business needed a way to reach new potential customers on an ongoing basis that was affordable. The first thing that we recommended to this business was local SEO, very effective and very affordable product. But again, all about having that online presence. If people are online and they're searching preschool near me, child care in a specific zip code, we want to make sure this school is showing up as an option and you know, that first option for our customers. We also utilized Facebook and Instagram email, and then Schnapp's on-site directory. So the campaign has continued to renew over the past two and a half years, and the client has told us they've had a steady flow of inquiries and new registrations each month. It's a little bit smaller of a campaign, but again, a very effective way, and they're able to use multiple products to reach and fill that full sales funnel to attract new customers, educate interested customers, and eventually convert and retain customers. All right, now we have a little bit of time for Q&A, so please feel free to put anything in the chat or come off mute if you have a question. I would just say I've seen some pretty in-depth questions come through. Stacy. thank you so much for answering those. You've done a great job. I would say for some of those more complex questions, Meeting with Stacy, Kevin, or somebody from one of their teams is going to be the best way for us to sit down and put a plan together for you, or at least get more those quite more in-depth questions answered. So certainly encourage you to, to schedule some time. As Stacy just mentioned, um, the local and organic SEO audits are free and something that we can put together for for any any small to medium-sized business or large business for that matter. Um, so certainly reach out to, to one of them if that's something that you're interested in. And that is always a great starting point for any conversation that you're going to have regarding digital advertising or advertising in general. I did see a couple side questions come in that I just wanted to, to throw out here for you, Kelly. Um, and I'll try to help answer them as well. Um, I'm interested in having a meeting with your folks. How do I set that up? Again, we'll send out this, we're going to be sending out the recording and some materials after the fact, and we'll make sure that there's a contact person for you to get in touch with as well. I believe we also have a QR code that can direct you to the right space, the right place here as well. And I'll um, also throw in, Chris, that is also how you'll go about getting a free SEO audit. So please reach out and we'd be happy to get that pulled for you. Yep. Thank you, Kelly. Um, again, you mentioned a free SEO audit. How do I get that? Kelly just clarified that for us. Um, so no worries there. We'll make sure you have all of that contact information and we'll get that for you. And then the last one that I'm seeing here is, uh, do you work with small agencies? And the answer there is absolutely. Um, again, uh, we'll make sure that you have our contact information, but we would be more than happy to sit down and discuss any of those uh, opportunities with you at any time. Yeah, I could chime in there, Chris. I get, I actually get often calls from, you know, small agencies, you know, one or two men operations. Um, they, hey, we do social in-house. We also do some PR work for clients, but often they don't do all of these services in-house. And so this is a great place we can fill in those gaps for small agencies who might just need some content written or you know, a, a, a video campaign done. Um, we do shoot video, by the way. I, I did see that question flow by you as well. Um, we recommend every business that's talking to, you know, 30, 40 year olds and younger, 50 year olds and younger to have video. Have video on your site, talking about telling people about your business. It's so much more personal than just a bunch of pages that you send people to. We recommend video and social media 
Um, highest ROI we see is our um, is our video social ads that are running. Um, again, YouTube pre roll streaming TV for people who you know don't have cable. You know, most of us no longer have cable, or you know, many of these uh, millennials have never had cable, um, and so they don't even know what that is. Um, and so what we find is those having a video can be, be used in many, many places and it is super effective. Um, so if you don't have a video, um, yes, we do offer those services. If you have somebody that could do it for you, great. Um, but we definitely recommend having video in multiple places for to reach the millennial parent. Absolutely. I would even go even further there, Stacy, and say I would recommend if you're going to do video that you have both a, like a 15 and a 30 second ad that allows us additional inventory options. And it also makes it a little bit easier for us to just plug and play that video all over the place. So that's just an, another side recommendation there. Looks like we have one more question that I'm seeing. Or actually two more questions. Oh, I'm sorry, a couple more that I missed down here at the bottom. Um, thanks for the presentation. Your case study result at the end isn't looking impressive, to be honest. Case study cost per click was $7.80 and number two was 10. Um, that's And that seems to be extremely high. I would tell you this, cost per click is relative based off of industry. It's also going to be relative based off of your location. It's going to, there's going to be a lot of factors that play into it. A $7.80 cost per click may sound high, but if we are working with a uh, company, let's say in the HVAC space, that could be as high as $32. Um, there are different industries that are going to lead to different cost per click. Now, what we want to make sure that we're doing is we're helping to reduce that cost per click throughout the course or the lifetime of that campaign. Our goal is always to drive that down and drive your overall ROI up. So to get more specific for uh, the anonymous attendee here, if there are specific case studies that you need related to ROI, we'd be happy to jump on a call and discuss those with you further. But cost per click is going to vary greatly based off of industry, location, and a multitude of other factors. So I think that there's um, some other things that we could discuss there. What about a small nonprofit? Um, we do work for we do work with not for profit uh, companies um, across you know across New York. So certainly something that we can do. Again, I would encourage you to reach out to Stacy or Kevin or somebody on their team to get some specifics about what we can do. Let's see, do your audits for com do you do audits for companies that aren't related to parenting content? We are location services for TV. Absolutely, we are happy to work with most industries out there, and we can run audits for anybody and everybody. So, uh, all we would need to know is your your website, some competitors in your area, and we can certainly put something together for you. Stacy, I don't know if you had anything additional you wanted to add there. Um, yeah. So, yes, if you are a you know a non parenting business and you just want to reach you know and HVAC homeowners. Um, you know, certain income levels, we can reach retirees, um, you know, people who have a second home, um, people who are, you know, looking for remodeling services. I mean, the, the, the options are endless and we work with anybody. Um, this, because I had a New York family and a lot of my customers are interested in, you know, reaching par obviously parents. Um, and so that, uh, that's why we had this, but, um, there are going to be additional webinars that we are going to be offering. We're going to have an education one just for, uh, schools, colleges, um, you know, like any level school, private schools, charter schools, we're going to be offering that in September. Um, Kevin Kelly can speak to, I believe there's one next week, Kevin, um, a, another webinar the company will be offering. Yeah, August 2nd, we're doing home services industry. So any type of contractors or anybody who serves um, homeowners, even renters, landscapers, plumbers, electricians, HVAC, uh, pool, et cetera, that, that vein. I think that we've answered most questions. This last one is I'm thinking specifically about advertising to millennial parents. Again, I think this sounds like an opportunity for you to speak with somebody on our team and get a, a more refined proposal or audit put together. I think we can offer a lot of great ideas and, and really spend some time getting to know your business a little bit better. Right. We do offer free creative services. I'm not sure if that question was referring to like artwork when you mean imagery and things. So something very important to, you know, any advertising campaign, not just digital is resonating with the, the person you're trying to talk to. 
Um, and so creative uh, ads, print, digital, um, we, we do offer that service free of charge for any customer working with us. So um, we do create your emails, we will create display ads, digital ads, like I said, you know, social ads, print ads, all part of the service and working, partnering with us. Just checking the Q&A one more time in the chat. I, I think we've answered everything at this point. Well, there were a couple that were answered um, via chat, so I don't know if everybody saw those or had access to it. I thought maybe it'd be worthwhile to address publicly. Um, there was one question in regards to social media and the best protocol for converting to a customer. Um, so once again, I mean, the, the best scenario is to have a conversation with us. It doesn't cost you anything, but the any type of marketing that you're doing, you should have some sort of follow-up process in the back end um, that's, that you are accountable towards. So if you're getting a lead, regardless if it's social media or Google or, or what have you, if you get a phone call or an email, it's best that you have some sort of infrastructure in place to reach back out to these leads in a timely manner uh, as soon as possible, because that's when they're interested. You want to get them at that zero point of interest when they are most engaged and, and you are top of mind in that moment. Um, there are some solutions that exist out there that are third-party solutions that that we don't provide that can help you with this, whether it's text messaging or automated email marketing or a CRM system or things like that. We'd happy be happy to discuss that as part of the process. But what we're focusing on here is how do we drive the leads? Once you get the lead and converting that lead, that's that's in your hands at that point. We can point you in the right direction and we can educate you and we can fill you in on, on what that process might look like. Uh, but ultimately, it would be up to you to to seek it out. And like I said, we could point you in the right direction. Um, but those are currently are not solutions that we yet offer. Um, but we could, like I said, point you in the right direction. There was another one. Um, Berkshire Hathaway, associate broker, husband, wife team. Uh, how do they brand themselves to to stand out in the mix? And and, and I'll just to speak once again more broadly on this point in regards to branding and standing out amongst your competition, whether that competition is your brand uh, and you are a subcomponent of that brand or you're competing against the market as a whole. Um, really, that's what marketing is all about. And, and that's why we discuss this full funnel strategy where you have the branding and awareness uh, solutions and you move them down through that funnel uh, the more impressions and the more often you're in front of the target audience. That's a key concept here when we're discussing digital marketing, guys, is the fact that we can target a very specific audience and get that message that is tailored to that audience. And this kind of speaks more broadly to the question in regards to, um, you know, how do we brand and message to millennial parents? Um, the goal really with the digital marketing is you have this defined target audience, your messaging and your creative and everything is focused around that target audience. And then the marketing is pushed out to that target audience in a comprehensive, holistic manner so that you are hitting all of the, the buckets from they may be interested and you are getting in front of them so that at some point when they are interested and now they're on Google, uh, and they're ready to act now that they're more familiar with your brand and they're they're willing to engage with it and more likely to engage with it and more likely to convert. Um, that's really the whole solution set here. So keeping all those elements um, in place and having that continuity throughout and offering this, this full funnel strategy and, and uh, delivering a full funnel strategy really is the, the bread and butter of digital marketing uh, and the fact that you're getting in front of that targeted audience. Um, there was another question, same person, in regards to SEO. Um, and I know we answered these once again in chat, but I, I thought it'd be worthwhile to address publicly live. So the question was, they get a lot of um, emails in regards to SEO services for their website. And their question was, how do we know who to choose? How do we know who's a good SEO provider or not? And Kelly had touched upon this. SEO is complicated. Um, and there are a lot of people who offer SEO and some people do it well and some people offer a less defined version of SEO. And unless you're, you're very familiar with the SEO concepts and what's involved in that, it would be hard for you 
to really understand who is the best option for you. Um, so I know that's you know probably not the answer you want, um, but what it comes down to is is there a good strategy in place? Are we uh, is the is the SEO strategy targeting the right people and the right phrases? And are there a lot of searches for those phrases? And is there transparency in the deliverables? What are what is this SEO provider do, doing for you? on the front end, what are they saying they're going to do? What type of reporting are they delivering on the back end to prove that they did those uh, agreed upon elements? And then what are the results? Um, and anybody who is soliciting you for that service, you should ask for that upfront. What are the deliverables? What are you gonna do for me? What is the strategy? What What is this research that you've done to support your strategy? And what am I going to get from this? Uh, and what type of results are you going to share what type of reporting are you going to share uh, to make you feel more comfortable? And, and the other thing that you have to keep in mind with SEOs, it's a longer term strategy. So you really have to be a believer in it. You have to understand that this takes time. It's well worth it when you have the right strategy in place, but it could take six, 12, 18 months for it to fully deliver and provide a return on investment. So SEO is a great solution but you do have to be mindful and have a um, healthy enough budget and a pain tolerance to wait for some period of time before you get the, the results that you're hoping to get. Uh, but if you partner up with the right partner, um, the return on investment is wonderful. And it, it's really, it's, it's a foundation, well, maybe not foundational, but um, it will deliver a lot of results. It just has to be the right strategy and you have to, be able to wait for that strategy to come to fruition. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, I ju and just to say that I appreciate and want to thank everybody for coming today. And just, you know, one of the answers to that question also is, you know, Schnepps Media has been not only has been in this community and has been serving advertisers and uh, information and news for over 40 years. So, you know, it's like everything else, you need a trusted partner, a partner that you know is going to be there tomorrow and the next week and the week after, and, and, and certainly will be there. And you know, we have set ourselves up so that we have specialists in advertising in general, i.e. Stacy, who's really works with everybody in the family division, Kevin, who works with people in home improvement and others. And then we also have specialists in each individual thing, like I mentioned, SEO, SEM. So we put a lot of resources into this. We would love for you to get in touch with us. We can go over it. There is absolutely no obligation um, for the audits or just for general consult on your on, on what you're doing for digital. So again, thank you everybody for uh, coming today. And if you look at your emails, we, we will have other seminars and of course, we encourage you to join us for those as well. And I want to thank all the panelists and especially Chris and, and Kelly as well for the presentation today. So thank you guys. Thanks everyone for your time. A pleasure, thank you. Thank you all.